Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Just a little announcement that my book called Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay is now on Lulu. So if you are interested in a copy, the link is below in the description where you can go over and buy a copy of my ghost book or and a copy of my heaven book as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the story coming. Bye. Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, I haven't done a ghost story for a while. So I thought tonight being Friday night, here's your spookville. Okay, I'm going to go over to my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. On page 208, I'm going to quote what happened to me when I woke up. Okay. So I'm talking about waking up, which is chapter 18 in my book. This is a very quick little um, little line of what I, happened to me there. But then I want to elaborate it for you, okay? Please be with me, guys, because I've still got quite a sore throat as well, okay? So I say on page 208... Even before I arrived back to the house in which I died, my ESP and perception were totally attuned and in sync with the universe. Some pretty amazing, brilliant things happened to me right from the first moments from waking up in the ICU room of the hospital. For more information on that, you will need to read my book about my psychic abilities. Now... That was written a few years ago by me. And I'm right now updating my book, which is called Psychics Explained. I'm hoping to get this out in the next few weeks, okay? So, one of the gifts in this book, Psychics Explained, is the abilities to see ghosts. And as somebody who's seen ghosts all of my life, I've got a lot of ghost stories to tell, but I want to continue on from what I say in my book. When I woke up in ICU after my event in which I died back in 2001, they put me into my own private room. So I've got a diagram here of what the room looks like. Here's the doorway and you walk across a little thing. Here's a doorway that goes into the ensuite. There was a toilet and a shower and a sink in there. So you come across here into the main room. Here's the single bed. There was a TV up here on the wall. And in this corner, there was a chair. When I woke up in this room, funny thing, I don't even remember getting put into that room. But that's another thing that will probably come to me at some point, right? I woke up. And in this chair, now this wasn't just like a um, five dollar cheap chair. It was like a like a you know those proper fabricated arm chairs that they do have in hospitals. You know the generic ones I'm talking about, right? So it was one of those. It's up in the back, and I'm just doing it here as a diagram. But in this chair sat an old lady. Behind her to one side was an, a man, probably 55, 65 years old. In the, on the other side of her was a woman who was probably a bit younger, um, I'd say 40. There was a girl leaning down on the ground. She was probably five to eight years old. And there was this dog there. And the dog, even knowing now I'm still remembering it, I can tell you, it was like a sandy-coloured Labrador, this dog. So I'm here, I woke up, and as I looked down past my feet, I could see them in the corner. So I'm just sitting there, because I've just woken up, you know, I've spent time in ICU, 
in a coma, plus I'd been to heaven for like five years. Do you think I wanted to just bounce out of bed and start doing tap dance routines? No. So I'm just lying there and I'm observing these people in, and the dog in the corner of the room. But I knew they weren't there because all of them were see-through. Now, I've learnt over the years that a see-through, full-bodied apparition is not a spirit. These were ghosts. People who have died at the hospital or elsewhere and they're all now congregating in the hospital for whatever reasons. And that's why I was actually more concentrating on the dog. Why was there a dog in the hospital? We've got to go back to the point that it's a sandy coloured Labrador. Could have it been someone's eye dog, like a blind person's eye dog? Could have it been someone's like animal assisted therapy pet? You know, how like veterans, they get their, um, what are they called, support animals, okay? So this animal was in that mix as well. The little girl on the ground, she was leaning down patting the dog and she's giggling away, really happy. The lady and the man standing there is like this, oh yeah, they're talking and da 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 da. And the old lady sitting in the chair, which I thought was so respectful for her age that she was the one who got the chair and everybody else had to stand around her. And this little girl too was leaning on the ground. It was like a family. It really was, it was like a family. But something in me knew that it wasn't a family. These people were so unassociated to each other, but they just found themselves in the situation that they're in. Even this dog, yeah, because the little girl, I, I, uh, thinking back, it's like that dog wasn't owned by any of those either because they, the dog just didn't really just go to one of them. It was just like sitting there, just ah, 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 happy, happy, like a lap dog does, right? So I'm sitting there just listening to them all talking. They weren't talking about anything specific. It was all just random stuff that they were just saying. You know, there was none of the like, oh, when's the nurse coming in to give us a sponge bath? There was no, oh, geez, I'm hungry, I want food. It was just really generic stuff. Um, oh, I've just been down that hallway. I heard the lady say that I've just been down that hallway. So it's real basic information without giving away personal information, etc. that I was listening to. So I'm sitting, lying in my bed and I'm just watching these five people, five beings. There was the old lady, then the middle-aged woman, the middle-aged man, the little girl and the dog. So there's five of them and I'm watching them and... A nurse walks in so she comes in through this doorway here she comes around and she's sitting next to me yeah you know, she's got my medical chart and she's got the pen and she's doing some stuff like this she says how do you feel and I said oh I'm all right <laughs> I've just been in a coma after I've been to heaven for five years how do you think I'm feeling <laughs> type thing <laughs> She says, oh, are you comfortable? And I said, oh, yes, I'm actually just watching these people. She looks back and she's looking all around. She says, who are you looking at? I said, I'm looking at these people. She said, who? I said, the people in the corner. There's an old lady sitting in the chair. There's an old man. There's a woman. I explained to her what they all look like. I even told her what the dress on the little girl leaning down patting the dog looked like. I even told her that the dog had on a really big black collar around its neck. You know, those big black collars that you can buy for big dogs. Um, anyway, so she's looking around and she's like, oh, yeah, right. She's off at the fairies because she's been drugged up in a coma for the last week. <laughs> Who would, you know, normal reaction to being dosed up, I think. So I look at them. 
and I say to them, and I'm looking at them, and they're all still just talking to themselves, and I said, oh, hello, if you guys can let this lady know that you're here, can you please bang on the window? Now, one thing I didn't tell you, in this room, the window was the whole length of the room. It started about two foot from the bottom of the room and it went all the way up to nearly the ceiling. There were huge windows. So I'm on the bed, the nurse is here standing next to me and I'm looking at these ones in the corner. I should have done it that way. Sorry, I'm upside down. And I said, hey, can you please bang on this window? Straight away, it went like this. Three big knocks on the window. Now, when I just knocked on my clipboard, nothing happened. But when you bang on glass, you know how the glass vibrates? That's what it did. So do that on your window and you'll see the glass vibrate. Bang, bang, bang. This nurse dropped the clipboard, hands in the air, and she's out of the room. She's gone. So I looked back and they were the five of them, oh the dog makes five, but the four of them, they're sitting there. They're looking at her running from the room like, what's her problem? What's her problem? And I said, oh well, thank you so much for letting me know you're here. And I just rolled over and went back to sleep. When I woke up, they were gone. But another nurse came in. And as she's walking in the room, it's like she's walking on eggshells. You really... <laughs> she walks in the room. She comes over to me and she says, How you feeling? I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. She said, Are we alone? So I look over in the chair, which is now sitting there empty. I said, Yeah, no one's here now. <laughs> she says, Oh hand on a heart like this oh, oh thank goodness um i just want to do your blood pressures and i'll go so <laughs> that nurse kept on coming back to see me you know how they do their rounds that other nurse the first one where she dropped a clipboard and ran out of the room she never came back <laughs> so hospitals for me are a hot spot of activity I've been in a lot of hospitals over my years and I've been there to also see other people as well when they've been in hospital as well. And it absolutely amazes me at how many ghosts do hang around hospitals. So let's talk about it. Um, in my book, Ghosts, um, Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay, I talk about how hospitals... And I even, I think I even talk about in this book too, um, Five Years in Heaven, that ghosts either know they've died or they don't know they've died. And what I find is the ones that hang around a hospital are the ones who don't know that they've died. That So they're sitting there, they, you know, they, they might be sitting at home and they get a chest pain. So their partner calls an ambulance, the ambulance comes, they go to hospital. Worst case scenario happens. But they don't know that they've passed over. So they sit up in bed and they're looking around thinking, wow, no one's really talking to me. So they think, well, I feel all right. Because you do, because you're in energetic form now. No pains. So you get up out of bed and you start walking down a corridor and you're looking for your partner, you're looking for your doctor... Yeah, looking for somebody who too just wants to talk to you. And the unfortunate thing is, nobody does. Unless someone like me walks in where I can see them. So I actually have said in one of my books that when I go to hospitals, I'm all right walking through the front foyer, but... It's amazing how many of these souls sit in the foyer with their suitcases. Funny how they can pick up their suitcases. Because I've seen a lot of them with their suitcases. Some of them are in their clothes. Some of them are in gowns, you know, hospital gowns. Some of them are in nighties with gowns on and slippers. So they've been in hospital for a while. 
Some are in their best clothes. I've even seen a guy in a tuxedo. And they're waiting to be picked up to go home. Because now that they're in this energetic form, they don't have muscular or physical pain anymore. They don't feel hurt. So they think they're cured. Thank you, doctor. And now they're ready to just discharge themselves and go home. So I'm all right when I'm walking through the foyer because I see a lot of them just sitting there waiting and they look at you like, they look past you. Like, where's my husband? Is he there? You know, as soon as the, the front doors open of a hospital, everyone's, oh, is that my husband? Is that my family? Is my daughter coming to pick me up? So I just walk through them. And then I get into an um, elevator to go up to where I've usually got to go. And as the door opens in the elevator, there's can be up to 20 deep. So we're talking probably 80, 100 people could be standing there. And they're all looking in the elevator. Is my husband in this one? Has he come to pick me up? It's quite sad. Very sad. But then you get the ones who have been there so long like the ones I think that I had with me where they interact with each other and like when I was in that room and I heard them talking and she's saying things like oh, I've just been down the corridor and oh yeah I went down that flight of stairs how often do they just haunt the hospital for until at some point they work it out because you've got to remember with these spirits these ghosts, I mean, souls lost souls one thing is that they no longer know time they don't know night day, night day makes a week they don't know the length or the duration of a week so a week could be an infinity for them and an hour could be a split second so if you do go to hospitals and you feel something around you good chance there is someone watching you because they do watch us hoping that we're someone they know hope you like this story guys talk to you all soon bye